<laughs> Have you ever wondered where weaves originated? There's well-documented evidence that human extensions were widely used in Africa, specifically ancient Egypt, as cosmetic ornaments. Hair extensions and wigs were made from either human hair bought or traded, vegetable fibers, or sheep's wool. Wigs were a valuable commodity ranked alongside gold and incense in account lists in the town of Kahun. Rich or poor treated their own hair and hair obtained elsewhere as a highly pliable means of self-expression. Egyptians dyed it, cut it, braided it, and weaved charms in their hair. Quite often, the more elaborate styles were worn by men. Bright blue, red, and gold dyed weaves were popular in addition to conventional black. It is said that Cleopatra's favorite was peacock blue. Pharaohs and influential members of society wore intricate extensions using a complex system of weaves and knots. For poor citizens of Egypt, there were plenty of cheap knockoffs. Wigs and weaves were often used in funeral attire as well. The ancient Egyptians, both male and female, were known for hating body and facial hair and used all kinds of shaving techniques to get rid of it. The hair was often shaved to prevent hair lice and used wigs to replace their own. The double or duplex with curls at the top and braids below was a very popular style. Braids were a favorite form of hair extension. Some were woven into intricate designs to give more length and greater style. Around 500 BC, braids became an indicator of age, religion, and wealth depending on the type of knots and twists the hair is styled in. A 3300 year old woman was discovered wearing 70 extensions. Wig choices were highly influenced by fashion which inevitably changed over several millennia. Many paintings show women wear their ornate wigs topped by a perfumed cone often worn during festive occasions which melted and cascaded over the wig as the evening went on. The tomb paintings also show men and women getting their hair done by other individuals like servants. To make wigs, the individual would first gather the required amount of hair, then sort it into lengths and remove any tangles with a fine tube comb, which also removed any lice eggs. Wig makers would use an impressive array of hairdressing tools to arrange the prepared lengths into an assortment of braids, plaits, or curls. Each piece would be coated into a warm beeswax and resin fixative mixture, which would be hardened when cooled. Since the melting point of beeswax is 140 to 145 degrees, this method of securing the hair was effective and worked well in Egypt's extreme climate. The individual locks of braids could then be attached directly to the natural hair in the form of extensions or alternatively they could be used to create a whole wig by fastening the individual sections of hair into a mesh type foundation base. In 1881, a wig was discovered inside a box bearing the seals of high priest Menkapura. It had a huge double part structure of curls and plaits so it was assumed to belong to his wife Esther Kemp. Yet the wig that was recently identified as hers was much smaller. Throughout history, other ancient cultures, including the Assyrians, Phoenicians, Greeks, and Romans also used wigs as an everyday function. African Americans have a deep connection to Africa even though the land is foreign to us. I found this to be incredibly interesting and I hope that you're able to learn something you didn't know before. for watching please share it with a friend and I'll see y'all next time